In these tough times, the importance of a smile cannot be underrated. James Longman has our Feel Good News Roundup. Hi everyone. There does now seem to be a trend in Europe of the virus slowing down. Italy and Spain, two of the hardest hit countries, are now possibly coming out of their nightmare. And other countries are starting to plan for what life could look like when these lockdowns come to an end. So there are little glimmers of hope all around. And first up this week, we've got something really special for you. Naomi Raplensky is 101 years old. She lives in New York with her wife, Eva. She's a poet, and boy, have they had a life. Who better to speak to for inspiration than someone who's lived through the Spanish flu, the Great Depression, and the Holocaust? I got the chance to speak to her, and it was truly an honor. I would say, do your best to be honest and caring for others. Can you talk to me about the power of poetry? Because I know you are an amazing poet. Poetry is great and we need more of it. We need more of it in this life. It's part of me, so can't really separate them. And she also read for us one of her poems. This is an old poem of mine, Housing Shortage. <laughs> I try to live small. I took a narrow bed. I held my elbows to my sides. I try to step carefully and to think softly and to breathe shallowly in my portion of air and to disturb no one. I didn't realize until I just read this that I have a couple of lines here that sort of relate to breathing. So it's in my mind, uh, breathing, but this was written a long time ago, before the present world horror. That was so moving. Thank you so much. What an extraordinary woman. Thank you, Naomi and Eva. Stay well. Check out this woman from Maine who's taken a creative approach to helping her neighbors. She's recruited her Siberian Huskies trained for sled racing to help deliver medicine and groceries to the elderly. This is what she had to say. We hit the grocery store first and pick up everything that we need um, just so that we have all of that already and don't have to go back to the store. And then we just make stops along the way, um, giving the dogs breaks in between. They're really thankful um, and they're so excited to see me and the dogs. And I just want to be able to like help mitigate um, make things a little easier for people. Those are some cute helpers. And you've seen Queen Elizabeth has given a rare address, but did you catch the reference at the end? We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know where. It was a nod to this 1939 song by Vera Lynn. It was popular during the Second World War with soldiers going off to fight and the families waiting for them back at home. It was a powerful way to invoke that wartime spirit as she recalled her first speech alongside her sister back in October 1940. We as children spoke from here at Windsor to children who had been evacuated from their homes and sent away for their own safety. Today, once again, many will feel a painful sense of separation from their loved ones. But now as then, we know deep down that it is the right thing to do. And finally, I wanted to leave you with a poem. It's called These Are The Hands and it's by a British writer, Michael Rosen. He wrote it to celebrate the UK's health service a while back. And I think you should hear it now. These are the hands that touch us first, feel your head, find the pulse, and make your bed. These are the hands that tap your back, test the skin, hold your arm, wheel the bin, change the bulb, fix the drip, pour the jug, replace your hip. These are the hands that fill the bath, mop the floor, flick the switch, soothe the saw, burn the swabs, give us a jab, throw out sharps, design the lab. And these are the hands that stop the leaks, empty the pan, wipe the pipes, carry the can, clamp the veins, make the cast, blog the dose, and touch us last. Thank you so much to all the health workers who are putting themselves on the line for all of us. 
Stay well, everyone, and be good to each other. Thank you to the health workers, and thank you, James, for that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.